Hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, hundreds of cows are being studied in a new fashion in Fort Collins. Denver 7's Colette Bordelon explains why it matters when it comes to climate change. These machines are part of the country's largest facility for measuring methane emissions from cattle. And how they're doing so is actually through burping. Well, like clockwork, it'll happen once a minute. Dr. Sarah Place knows that because of these machines. It's a snack machine. Where cows come for a treat. So there it goes. So That's, that was a burp. That, exactly. And through those burps emit methane. I mean, we don't necessarily hear burps like we think about with people, right? But it is a removal of gas. Yeah, eructation. Microorganisms in their stomach ferment the feed and like any other fermentation, produce gas. If they didn't belch methane, um, they actually couldn't eat all of these things that we can't eat. Kim Stackhouse Lawson is the director of Ag Next, a new initiative at Colorado State University that focuses on the development of sustainable solutions in animal agriculture. They both impact and benefit the environment. She says the EPA estimates agriculture makes up for 10% of total greenhouse gas emissions. Of that, livestock is responsible for less than 4%. Beef cattle are the majority of that chunk at about 2.8% of emissions, and that includes methane, nitrous oxide, and carbon dioxide. It might not be as much as the perception of them um, is, but when we think about methane, um, and methane is about 12% of the total greenhouse gases that are produced as estimated by EPA. They do produce a lot of that methane. Their burps make up around 27% of the total methane pie. And we're hopeful that as we discover ways to reduce methane, we also can discover ways to increase their animal health and well-being and their performance so that it's really a win-win. <laughs> Solutions could include genetically selecting the cattle that produce less methane or certain additives in their food. There is a reason we don't have a lot of solutions, and part of that is lack of federal dollars. In fact, there's been less than $5 million in the last 10 years that has been contributed by federal USDA research dollars. Most of the work that's been done to study this subject has been in partnership with those who want to know more about methane and cows. Well, this is $1.3 million worth of equipment that's here um, and it's all been either gifted or donated to us um, from beef producers who are interested in furthering their understanding of greenhouse gas production. There you go. It's a new frontier for beef production. If there's one thing people take away always from presentations I give, just know it's cow burps, not cow farts. That's not really a thing. And these scientists are clearing up any misconceptions along the way. The goal is here to find a baseline for methane emissions from the beef industry. They also want to find out good ways of measuring, recording, and verifying those emissions across the country and giving people a good solution that doesn't have any economic challenges to it that can be applied to anyone, anywhere. In Fort Collins, Club Bordelon reporting. And scientists also say the way cattle graze could help reduce emissions. A professor at Arizona State says adaptive multi-paddock or AMP grazing might be helpful. It's a technique already used in the UK. Instead of letting cows graze for months in one big field, farmers herd their cattle into smaller areas to maximize manure distribution. And then the herd is moved to a new area in a day or two. Early data shows cows burped up to 10% less methane using this method of grazing.